So we're starting with the brain here. And first we're going to talk about what covers the brain, what covers or protects the brain. And there are basically three things. First one's sort of obvious. It's your thick candy shell surrounding the brain. What would that be? Skull. Skull. More specifically, I'm going to use that word, cranium. Well, what's the difference, Mr. Helly? The difference is cranium are the bones of the skull. So my dad tells me use your cranium. Yeah, that won't, I won't help you. Yeah. Unless you're trying to, like, smash walnuts or something. <laughs> All right. Bones of the skull that house the brain. Um, the the cranium the the skull is divided into two sets of bones: cranial bones and facial bones. Those are the those are the two. So, if it doesn't house the brain in some way, it's a facial bone, like maxilla, mandible, vomer, nasal, uh, lacrimal, zygomatic things like that. But ones that do house the brain would be like what? Parietal. Parietal. Frontal, occipital, and we'll stop with those because those all actually have uh, lobes of the brain named after them, so that's really convenient. Okay, so good. That's our major protection here, but if that somehow breaks down, uh, well, it, it shouldn't, otherwise you really are suffering, but... Um, we have another layer of protection underneath that's not quite so hard. Starts with an M. I thought I heard somebody say it. Meninges. Uh huh. Meninges. The meninges are tissue layers, soft tissues, because the brain, uh, the skull is technically tissues. Um, soft tissue layers that cover the CNS. It's not just the brain. The meninges cover the spinal cord as well. Now around the brain, they're called cranial meninges. Around the spinal cord, they're spinal meninges. There are several layers of this. So let's make note of this. So layers from outside to inside. First one. It's called the dura mater. Oh. D U R A M A T E R. Note that this word is not matter, and it is also not pronounced mater like toe mater. Okay. Dura mater. Mater is Latin, as is dura. Mater means mother. Dura means tough, so this literally means tough mother. So alma mater being? Alma mater means other mother. So Simo was my alma mater. It was my other mother. We okay. say that because, you know, that was a place that I went and it taught me and nurtured me for four years. Okay, five years. Uh, and, and, you know, educated me and took care of me. Anyway, so that was my alma mater. So why is the fight song an alma mater? It's a song about your alma mater, you know. Uh, okay, it is the thickest tissue layer, thickest, toughest layer. Of meninges. I'm a texture person, so I'm gonna throw this your direction. Um, we used to be able to touch the brains and the and this tissue when we went to uh, St. Louis for the cadaver thing. Now they won't let you touch them. So I'll try to describe it to you. You, you ever cut a grapefruit in half and eat that? Mm -hmm. You know the little tissues that are in between each of the pieces that you spoon out that are kind of tough? They're about that texture, that toughness, that thickness, and that color. 
That's what a Dura Mater is. I will never use it. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> All right. And so, um, <coughs> but as we age, it starts to break down. I was talking to a brain surgeon one time, and he was telling me that, you know, doing uh, surgery on someone who's in their late 70s or early 80s, this tissue kind of falls apart in your hands because it's like it, it starts to break down over time. But yours is still intact and good and strong, I'm sure. Okay, next layer is called the arachnoid. The arachnoid. This layer uh, is kind of like a spider web, which is perhaps where arachnoid came from because arachnophobia is fear of spiders. Okay, uh, is a porous layer. between moders, which logically means what's going to be next? Intramoder. Some kind of moder, yeah. Well, we need a good cop, bad cop situation. we got a tough mother. Weak mother? Sort of, yeah. Gentle, soft. The pia mater. The pia mater literally means soft mother. A soft mother is the tissue layer that touches the brain. Tissue layer that touches the brain. Um, This one is loaded with astrocytes. There's lots and lots of these particular cells there, loaded with astrocytes. What do we call an inflammation of the meninges? Meningitis. Meningitis. So infections of the or viral or bacterial infections of the meninges are meningitis. And why are they so difficult to fight with? Because the brain's like right there. Uh, the stomach. Yes, because it's difficult for antibiotics to filter through the blood-brain barrier to get to the infection. So that makes it tough to fight. Okay. So we went from thick, hard tissue to thinner, softer tissue to liquid. What's this? Cranial fluid. Uh-huh. It's called cerebrospinal fluid. Abbreviated CSF. Okay. Um, is the clear liquid in brain and spinal cord. All right. Clear liquid in the brain and the spinal cord. Its first job, jobs, one, protect and cushion neural structures. You consider all the axons and dendrites and all the little delicate connections that we have in our brains and you think about like a football athlete running full speed and smashing their helmet into somebody else. There's got to be something in here that helps your brain not get terribly damaged from that. Because I mean, if you thought about like just putting a brain in a like inside of a helmet and then slapping a helmet, then that brain's going to slap the inside of that helmet. That basically happens inside your skull. But because your brain is floating in this liquid, it gets a little bit more help. But still, occasionally, the brain will slam into the walls of the skull and get bruised, and that's what a concussion is. Uh, but this is to try to help prevent that from happening just from like walking down the stairs and stuff. Okay. We never be able to do anything. It's true. Next job of this stuff is to supply nutrients to neurons. 
because remember the brain is really really picky it doesn't want direct the neurons don't want direct contact with the bloodstream because there's stuff in blood that's not particularly good for neurons and the the contents of your blood are subject to change really really quickly you know uh, though our body buffers the pH and keeps everything in a normal range, there's a lot of things that can change. You know, you take an antibiotic; it's you know it gets absorbed uh, by your intestines, gets into your bloodstream. Your body doesn't know what that is. Your brain doesn't know what that is, and it could interact with these. There's this barrier that exists. So we need this stuff, highly filtered, whatnot, to to supply the uh, to supply the brain with nutrients and the neurons there with nutrients. And the last one here on this list is the reason that we sleep, or at least one of the reasons we sleep, which is what? Cleaning. Yeah, uh-huh. So waste removal. Because we don't have a lymphatic system in our brains, and our skulls do not have any lymphatic vessels inside of them. So as a result, when we rest, our, our cells shrink back a little bit, and CSF goes into overdrive, washing around everything to get everything cleaned out for us. Okay, so over here to the side. Oh wait, how much of this stuff is there, gang? A lot. Give me, give me a quantity. Give me a metric quantity, a metric volume. Uh, a liter. A liter, okay, any other guesses? Three liters. Three liters? There's the answer. Ready? What is that? 150 milliliters. That's all you've got, gang. That's that's all you have floating around. This is not cerebrospinal fluid. I didn't just do a spinal tap on something. This is water. But it should be clear, maybe slightly yellow, just barely yellow. But if it's cloudy, that means either infection or too many proteins. Uh, but this right here is the uh, uh, is is about all you're going to have at any one time. So your brain is floating in, is filled with your spinal cord is filled with this stuff. Now, the stuff that you came to school with is gone. You've since made new stuff. The stuff you woke up with is different than the stuff you went to bed with. Okay, every eight hours, this stuff is new again. It renews itself every eight hours. So, 150 mils replenished every eight hours. It's pretty impressive. And it makes sense, though. I don't know if you ever do, like, if you guys probably all use dishwashers, but I, we wash dishes by hand. And so, like, if you're washing a whole lot of dishes, I usually drain the water out and start over like one or two times because it gets gross. And this is the same thing with this stuff. It's going to wash through all the stuff in your brain. It's going to get gross. So we got to take that out because it's got all this waste products and stuff. And it, But it's not like it's all in, then it drains it all out, and then here's all in again. It cycles it through. And so they'll be you're, con you're making new stuff right now, even while we're talking about it. Okay. So, where is the CSF? Short answer, everywhere. Everywhere in the CNS. Well, not nice to answer an acronym with an acronym, but the cerebrospinal fluid is everywhere in the central nervous system. But where does it pool, okay? It fills the ventricles of the brain. Okay, I'm going to briefly try to explain that. All right, I'm going to draw somewhat of a drawing here. So there are four main ventricles in the brain. They look about like this. These two are side by side with a little bit of space in between them. A little shading in there. Mm -hmm. 
And there's one that's kind of stuck right in the middle of them here too. And there's a little pipeline that comes down from that one to this last little tiny one right here. Okay, so here's what they look like. These things are called the lateral ventricles. Now we did not distinguish which one was one and which one was two because no one distinguishes that. They just call them the lateral ventricles. But this one's the third. And this little guy down here right in front of the cerebellum is the fourth. So later, lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. And those are filled with CSF. But CSF can't stay in one spot, otherwise it's not effective, you know. You wash dishes, it's effective if you, you, you bring the dishes to the liquid that's cleansing them, okay? If not, you would have to send the liquid over the top of those dishes. This is a kind of an analogy breakdown here, but we need to circulate this is what it comes down to. So how does CSF circulate? Answer. From the beating of the, what do you want to fill in here? What feels right? Beating of the heart sounds like it would be right, but it's not because the brain doesn't have a heart. From the beating of the cilia of ependymal cells. Ependymal cells, they kind of look like little squids. And the little tails? Yeah, they're the little tails, and they're constantly waving back and forth and moving. These things are moving back and forth. Okay, now these line these. All of the ventricles of your brain are completely lined with ependymal cells. And that's how that fluid is able to move effectively. Okay, we're going to talk about the grooves in the brain and then we'll call it a day, okay? <coughs> Groovy. <coughs> the brain has grooves and ridges. Brain has grooves and ridges. All right, so these raised portions individually, the gyrus, sunk down portions here called sulcus, individual. The plural is called gyri and sulci. That's the plural. Again, why? Why so many wrinkles? The Somebody said, uh, oh, once you learn uh, something new, you get a new wrinkle in your brain. That's not true. We have so many wrinkles in our brains. If that were true, we don't have quite that many. Surface area. Yes. The answer is surface area. All the processing takes place in the cerebral cortex, which is the outer portion of the brain. That's where thinking, doing, and all that stuff happens, surface area. Unfortunately, our skull seals in the process while our brain still wants to grow. So the brain's like, hey, can I grow past your skull? And the skull's like, uh, no. And so the brain's like, oh, man. So it folds in on itself as it tries to grow. So the brain folds in on itself. To make room 
four more cortex, cortex outer layer. That's just about it, folks. <laughs>